Hey guys, welcome to Gentleman's Test Kitchen. And today I'm going to show you how to properly sharpen your knives with using whetstones. What I have here is a whetstone system setup. What this is, is a bamboo um, bridge to be able to put over sinks or a bucket or a pan just like I am using right here. Um, what it does is that it allows you to be able to pin your blocks inside of there so this way you can adjust it however you need to, to be able to fit the contour of your sink or your water reservoir. Um, <clears throat> we use nothing but straight water on this. That's all it requires. The stones that I have here don't require any kind of soaking whatsoever. They're just wet and go. Um, what I have for grit is a 400 grit. I also have a thousand grit. And then I also finish it off with a 5,000 grit. And this over here, every time you lay it down or if you're getting ready to sharpen, what this is, is a block um, honing to be able to, or I should say block planer, um, to be able to even out your stone because when you sharpen it, sometimes you'll sharpen in one position for quite a while. And what happens is that it leaves little small uh, indentations inside the block. So what this does is it helps plane the surface out to be able to be level. And that's what you want to be able to get that ultimate edge that you're looking for. All right, so what I have here is an eight inch chef knife. Let me talk briefly about the identification of a knife. What we have here is the spine of a knife. And the spine usually runs all the way down to the tang of the knife which is this end, all right? And with this knife, this knife is nice. This is why one of my specialty knives. Um, the reason for it is because of the bolster. This area right here is called the bolster. And when you hold the knife, you wanna hold it by the top of the bolster. And what I mean by that is that you wanna have your thumb actually on the blade right above the bolster and your identification, um, your index finger on the other side of the knife. So you hold it like this, so this way you have full control of a knife. If you hold it like this, what will happen is when your hands get wet, it rotates inside your hand, and you don't want that. I also have a Santuco knife. Santuco knife, same thing. Spine, bolster, tang. Um, what's different about this knife is that it's a lot lighter and a lot thinner, and it has these indentation grooves that allows air to pass through when you're cutting like certain types of vegetables or potatoes and stuff. So this way it doesn't get stuck to the knife. Um, and I have a honing steel. A lot of people think that this honing steel sharpens your knife. It's actually not sharpening your knife. Your knife is already sharp to begin with. It's, what this is for is to straighten out the blade. Um, that's why you run in even strokes on each side to be able to take your edge and make it straight because what happens is when you're cutting over time or when what you're doing to the edge of a knife is that you're making it swivel all right and you know sometimes it'll act like if it's dull but it's really not dull um all it needs is a little honing a couple of times on each side evenly and it'll perform good again, like when you cut onions or tomatoes, especially tomatoes. Tomatoes will be a dead giveaway if your knife either needs a honing or a sharpening. Um, so with these knives, it's time for a little bit of a sharpening. I've been using them quite a bit lately, and usually with my skill and how much I cook and stuff like that, I usually sharpen them every two, maybe three months. All right, and my edge holds pretty well for quite a while and the reason for it is because I use whetstone sharpening methods. Now if you go with any other person that uses dry methods or even the store-bought versions of a sharpener, what happens is that you get in the dry version of a machine that makes that sound that when you pull it through like that buzzing sound and it's actually creating a lot of friction and with friction it creates heat and heat ruins the temperament of the blade. What I mean by temperament is that the durability of the blade holding its uh, shape for a very long time. 
Um, and what that what I mean by that is that the effects of you know doing dry sharpening is when you ruin the temperament, you'll have a nice edge, but that edge will fade really quick. And like I said, when you ruin the temperament, it makes it more your knife more vulnerable to getting dull a lot quicker. So you'll end up noticing that you're sharpening it quite often when you sh you're supposed to not. You know what I mean? It should be good for depending on who you are and what level of profession of, you know, cook you are. Um, from home, you know, I would say every six months. Um, but professionals, anywhere from like one month to like three months, you have to sharpen your knives to be able to make sure that they are performing well. Because uh, there's a saying in the kitchen, a sharp knife will never cut you, but a dull knife will. All right? So remember that. Um, and if you can't sharpen your knives, you know what I mean? It's best to always have a professional do it. And you always want to find out information on how they're doing, especially if you're buying high-end knives like Wusthoff or Shun or Global, um, any of those top brands. Um, you're paying good money and it's an investment that you're going to hold with you for a very long time. So this is why I'm using a water stone method. Um, the reason for it is because it keeps the blade cold and that's what you want in order to maintain the temperament of the blade. So this way it'll stay sharp for a very long time. It won't go dull really quick. When you use dry methods, it'll go dull quick and you'll get a nice edge on it, but the performance won't last. All right. You'll find yourself sharpening it quite often every couple of uses that you, you go ahead and use it for. Um, that's why they say to keep the knives out of the dishwasher because the heat of the dishwasher will ruin the temperament of the blade. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start sharpening. So like I said, I have a 400 grit stone here. All right. Make sure it's in place really good. You don't want any sloppiness or you know slag going on right here because remember you're playing with knives. Any slip up, you know what I mean, can cost you your fingers. Um, so I'm going to start with my 8 inch chef, alright, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a burr, and what I mean by burr is that when you sharpen a knife, the edge is like this, alright, going all the way down, alright, and the reason for <clears throat> we sharpen things is because the edge becomes like this, so by having an edge like this, we know that it's going to be sharp. So what I mean by creating a burr, a burr happens is when you stroke it so many times on one side, the tip of the knife starts curving over to the point where it wants to break off to create a brand new center point edge. Um, so no matter what direction it is, the burr is what you're trying to look for when you're sharpening a knife. All right? When you have that burr, you know what you need to do in order to make sure that burr is perfectly centered. And by doing that, it's just a matter of staying consistent and you know counting down your strokes. And I'll show you here in a, in a moment what I mean by counting down your strokes. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on one side first for a little bit. And then once I find that wire on the side that I'm looking for, I'm gonna switch it over and work the other side until I find the wire on the opposite side. Once those two things happen, then from there, we start doing our countdown. I'll swipe it three to four times this way, and I'll swipe it three to four times this way. And then I'll go three times down this way, and three times down this way, and then two times down this way, and then two times down this way, and then one side, one side, one side, one, all right? And by doing that, you're knowing that you're working that edge so much that the burr is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, evenly with the same amount of strokes, and then eventually it breaks off. And what you have is like a beautiful center point that's no longer dull anymore, all right? So let's go ahead and start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play my block, very important. Okay. 
rinse it off. So what I'm going to do is start from the tip right here. You're going to put all four of your fingers onto the side of the blade. And like I said, you hold it like this and you curve it over. You put your thumb on top of it to create pressure to where you know it's not going to rock or roll out of your, your reach. Your wrist is going to do all the play. So you're going to put it right here, your, your left hand or whatever hand you work with um, on the opposite side laying flush to the side of the blade. So I'm going to start with the tip and all I'm doing is just dragging it right up just like that. All right. Now with German knives it's very important that you stay at a certain degree of angle. What I mean by that is probably like with German knives it's anywhere from 20 to 24 degrees of uh, angle and with Japanese knife it's anywhere from like 10 to 15 degrees. Right, of angle. And that's why Japanese knives are so, so sharp. And they're hard steel, but the thing is with Japanese knives is that you have to really, really baby them because if not, if you mistreat them, they will chip and break on you. Um, but the beauty is, is that they're super, super sharp. And Japanese people, they love having that sharpness because of working with raw fish, um, anything like that, you know, because German knives, they can cut and stuff, but they don't perform like a Japanese knife does. The beauty about German knives, or any kind of American knife, is that, like I said before, it's soft steel. And it does have a good edge on it, and it has, you have to make sure you maintain that edge. But the beauty about this is that it's an indestructible knife. I mean, yes, you can break the tips off of these things and stuff like that, but the, most of all, if you were to drop it or mistreat it or fulfill off the counter, um, it's not going to chip or break on you, you know, it flexes, you know, with soft steel, whereas Japanese is hard steel. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start working on one edge. Feel it's getting dry, you add a little bit more water to the top, and just keep on going. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I bounced really quick, but um, when you're finding your angle, like I said with German knives, 22, it's usually you can put your thumb underneath it, like this, and you lay your knife down, or if you want on the other side like this, your thumb. All right. It'll help you find the 20 mark, anywhere between 20 to 24 degree mark. Now with Japanese, it'll probably be a pinky. All right. You just lay the knife down just like that and you'll find your edge, degree of angle. All right. Some people like to use pennies or quarters or a certain amount of them and stack them on there and stuff. But um, once you do it a couple of times, with your particular knife that you use all the time, it's gonna be like second nature. It's gonna be like riding a bicycle. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and finish what I was doing. And I'm just working one half of the knife right now. And I'm gonna start slowly working my way down to front again. And as I get to the very tip, since it's got curvature, I kind of curve the tang forward to be able to get that edge the way I want. And as I come back around, I bring it back over. All right. And then this is where I try to find a burr. And all you need to do, and you'll feel it, all right? You're not gonna be able to see it, it's very small. But you just run your thumb on the side of it and you're gonna feel a weirdness scrape across the, the, the grooves of your finger um, prints. It's there, but I still need to work the front. All right. I feel it in the back, but I don't feel it in the front. So I'm gonna work the front a little bit more. I'm 
you always want to stay even with the strokes. You can work one side, but you want to make sure you even it out throughout the whole night. And there it is, I feel it. All right, so now I'm gonna work the other side. And I'm not changing my body around. I'm not going on the other side of the counter or anything like that. If I was standing like this, all I'm gonna do is change my position right here and keep my hip up against the counter. And I'm gonna put my fingers on the opposite side. Now my index is my pressure point to keep the knife stable on the board, on, on the stone. So again, start from the front, curve it to the back. A little bit more water. looking for that burr again. Like I said, it transfers. It, it goes from one side and it goes to the other side because now I'm working on the other side. Got a little bit to do on the front. So now that I have established the burr from one side to the other, now I'm going to do the countdown. Remember what I said before? You do it from either three or four, which I like to start it off at four, and then you work your way down to three, and then two, and then one. Okay? So we go ahead. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, 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 one. All right. Now. Right now, you already have an edge. You can go ahead and work with this if you wanted to, but I like my edge to be nice and sharp. I don't mean by sharp. I like to have a, like a polished edge. And by doing that, by staging it down to different grits, the higher the number is, the finer the grit. All right. So I'm switching over to a thousand grit now. Before I was working with 400. I'm going to go ahead and plane it, make sure it's nice and smooth and planed out. All right. I'm going to clean it a little bit more with some water. All right. And at this point, I don't need to look for a wired edge anymore. So all I need to do is just basically do the countdowns again, starting from four, working my way down all the way from three, two, to one. Okay. One, two, three. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Two, one, two, one, 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 one. All right. So that's a thousand grit. Now I'm going to move my way down even finer to five thousand grit. All right. Now this is very important. This one right here, you want to stay nice and steady and you don't want to put a lot of pressure to it whatsoever. And you're going to see how fine this really pulls material off. And you want to make sure it's clean, that there's no marks on the stone whatsoever because that creates imperfection in the honing. Okay. Rinse it off. Clean it. Blade. All right, now watch. I'm gonna go nice. 
nice and soft there. I'm not putting a lot of pressure whatsoever. So. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. One, 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 one. All right, now look at that. Look how much material came off of that. And I wasn't pushing it hard whatsoever. I was just letting the knife do its own work, all right? But by doing that, it's creating a glass-like polish finish on the edge, all right? makes it even better for when you're cutting things. And what I mean by that is I'll show you. Let's go ahead and clean it really quick. Alright, I got a magazine. Magazine paper is usually the best thing to use when you cut things uh, because of durability of it. Santuco at certain points when you get to a Santuco you'll sharpen it to a point where you'll get to those grooves and you'll have to throw the knife out because it no longer performs like you you know you want it to but with the chef knife the chef knife is your main knife this knife will last you for a lifetime and you'll be passing it down to whoever your grandchildren whoever you're going to be able to carry on the legacy of this chef knife or your chef knife. But other than that, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you next time.